This presentation will cover correlation, including a definition of correlation, a discussion of the need for correlation, details on computing correlation, including variance, covariance, and the correlation coefficient, strength of association, linear and curvilinear relationships, properties of correlation, R squared, the coefficient of determination, and a discussion of correlation versus causation. Correlation is one of the most common and useful statistics. It's a measure of association, a single number that describes the degree of relationship between two variables. We can examine correlations between two variables heuristically by looking at a scatter chart. In this chart, our observations are very tightly centered around the line. In this case, we would say that the relationship between x and y is more correlated. We call this a strong correlation. By contrast, if the observations are scattered further out, we might say the relationship between x and y is less correlated, or that there is a weak correlation. Here are some examples of questions that ask about correlation. Is there any association between hours of study and grades? Is there any association between the number of churches in a city and the murder rate? When the weather gets hot, what happens to sweater sales? What is the strength of association between them? What about the sale of ice cream versus temperature? What is the strength of association between them? Furthermore, how do we quantify the association? While we can guess the relationship, there's a better way to do this using statistical measures. The measure we use is the Pearson correlation coefficient. To compute correlation, we'll need information on standard deviation and covariance. We know that the variance is the dispersion within a variable x or y, or the squared average deviation from the mean, as shown here. The covariance is the dispersion of x multiplied by the dispersion in y. It is calculated as the average of the product of deviations in individual means. Using the information on variance and covariance, we can compute the correlation coefficient as the covariance of x and y divided by the standard deviation of x, multiplied by the standard deviation in y. This measure of correlation ranges from negative 1 to positive 1. A higher number is a stronger correlation, and a lower number is a weaker correlation. Correlation coefficient r measures the strength of linear association. It measures the extent to which two variables are proportional to each other. It's unit-free, so for example, a measure of correlation between player height measured in inches and player weight measured in pounds will be meaningful even if they're measured in different units. Here are some examples. No linear association, negligible negative association, weak positive association, moderate negative association, very strong positive association, very strong negative association. In these scatter plots, what is happening to y as x is increasing? An important point to remember is that correlation is a measure of linear association. If the relationship is curvilinear, using the correlation measure is not appropriate. If x changes and y stays the same, then the correlation is zero. Since the correlation measure is a measure of linear association, we cannot use correlations on categorical data. It's related to sample size, and it's also very sensitive to outliers. The correlation measure r measures the strength of linear association. Squaring the correlation coefficient gives us r squared, which is the coefficient of determination. It is the proportion of common variation in two variables. This measures the strength or the magnitude of the relationship. While we cannot use percentage to interpret r, we can do so for r squared. For example, if r squared equals 67%, then we can say that 67% of variation in x is related to variation in y. Correlation does not imply causation. It's easy to see that in this chart, the Internet Explorer market share correlates with the murder rate in the US, but that doesn't mean that one caused the other. Causal relationships are determined based on facts and business models. We cannot determine causality from data. Correlation is a mathematical formula. You will get a number no matter what data you feed. First, you need to establish a logical relation and then find the correlation. Variables may be correlated if they have a causal relationship. For example, water causes plants to grow. Correlation can also occur when one variable is both the cause and the effect. For example, coffee consumption can cause nervousness, but it's possible that nervous people also drink more coffee. Correlation can also be high because both variables move together due to a missing third variable. For example, this comparison of deaths due to drowning and soft drink consumption during summer. 
Both variables are related to heat and humidity, a third variable not shown here. Omitting such variables can be dangerous. Here's a look at some additional measures of correlation using scatter charts. This concludes our video on correlation. Today we discussed the definition of correlation, the need for correlation, details on computing correlation, including variance, covariance, and the correlation coefficient, strength of association, linear and curvilinear relationships, properties of correlation, r-squared, the coefficient of determination, and correlation versus causation. <laughs>